What's going on guys, Landon up in here, back with another video. It's a great day here at Huffman Racing. I wanted to give you a quick update from the race shop. Here are some things we're working on, but the main thing I want to do in this video is go over a topic that was pretty controversial during the race season as far as rule books go between the Cars Late Mile Stock Tour and the NASCAR Weekly Racing Series Late Mile Stock Rule Book. Uh, there was obviously some DQs. We were DQ'd uh, at Nelson Motorsports uh, for shocks, and I wanted to go over basically the differences in the Cars Tour rule book and the late model rule book and why it's problematic and really just give everybody a brief overview for dummies as to why there's a difference. So thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, we'll go over some updates in the shop first and then we'll hop right into uh, the differences in the rule book. So thank you guys for clicking on today's video and we're gonna go ahead and hop right into it. All right, we're gonna go down the line here. I don't know if I talked about it in my last video, but I will be racing Gilbert on October 28th at Tri-County Motor Speedway in limited late model. And we'll also have Deuce out there, but we'll have someone else driving it. It's not gonna look like this. It'll actually be wrapped black. So you can watch these two cars uh, at Tri-County, obviously me in this car, uh, sponsored by Central Carolina Scale. Appreciate the support. He's gonna come on board for another race. Uh, he was with us at Wake County uh, when we went on our road trip down there. And then obviously we'll have a, a different driver in Deuce. And uh, Fido's also, Almost got the body or the greenhouse squared up and I'm actually gonna start hanging that body today. So that's an update on our three stallions. That's it. I'll take this right rear. All right, so this is actually gonna be a lot simpler than you would think, especially with the uh, controversy that's been going on this year with it. But the rule books really aren't that different and people seem to make it out like they really are. The main issue between the Cars Tour, or the main difference that creates the issue between the Cars Tour late mile stock rule book and the NASCAR late mile stock rule book, really the main problem is shocks. So this is a NASCAR legal Penske shock. Shout out to Dynamic Shock Service. My guy Brandon over there takes really good care of us here at Huffman Racing. But this is a NASCAR legal shock, okay? You have to run a certain gas pressure in these to make them function. Uh, the less gas pressure you can run, the more grip it's supposed to create. But in order for these to function properly, you have to run a certain gas pressure. This is a little bit cheaper shock than what I'm about to show you. This is a AFCO shock, not a Penske shock, but this is a base valve shock. Now the top of this is where the valve is kept. And you can see that the base of the shock or the top piece of the shock, I don't even know what the actual term is for it, but the uh, top compartment of the shock is taller on the base valve than it is the Penske. So, what these shocks do that create a benefit for you or an advantage is you can run less gas pressure in these because of the valve, which allows you to create more grip. Not a significant difference, but it is a performance benefit if used correctly. Most of the time people run these on the rear to create grip, but you can run them on the front. I race these all year at Hickory Motor Speedway um, because the shock rule there <laughs> is kind of unwritten, imagine that. But uh, the shock rule there allows you to run base valves or Cars Tour legal shocks. This is what I got caught with at South Boston back in July when I won there. I had one base valve shock on because crew chief um, didn't realize it was a base valve shock and we run it in the Cars Tour. It was on the left rear. They protested our shocks. Voila, we got thrown out. These are what you are allowed to run in all NASCAR legal uh, tracks that follow the rule book. This is an option for the Cars Tour. But a lot of people still run these in the Cars Tour, a lot. Not everyone runs a base valve. So this is my right front shock on Gilbert. Penske shock, NASCAR legal, but I'm gonna show you what a bump stop is. So this spring right here, which is actually on the shock. Now a lot of cars that are coilover that have the spring over top of the shock will run a separate bump rod down to the lower A-frame to set your bump stop on. However, this, whenever you run a big spring car like we do, or a bucket car, whatever you'd like to call it, we gotta run our bump stops on our shock. So here's our right front shock and there's our bump spring. That bump spring limits travel. So the car can travel down and as it's traveling down, it uses the primary spring, which is in this case, a big spring to control the race car, control the attitude of the car. But also when it gets down to a certain point, it picks up that bump spring. So it limits travel, allows the car to react differently uh, 10, 15 years ago, we weren't allowed to limit travel or run bump stops on the front of these race cars. We had to run primary springs only. You had a ride height rule, all that good stuff. Now we're just down on the ground, no ride height rule, and you can limit travel with the bump stops 
can be a spring, can be a washer, can be a mushroom uh, squishy thing. I don't know what the hell those are, those are called. There's a bunch of different ways you can limit travel with a bump stop and a hundred thousand different options and styles of bump stops. But that's how you limit travel in the front. So not only can you limit travel with a shock, but you can also take a small spring. So a coilover spring that's over top of this shock. Uh, see how this one's threaded. So it can be used as a big spring shock or a coilover shock. But you can run a small spring in the left rear and that spring actually coil binds to where the coils of the spring touch each other and compresses solid. So you're limiting travel by doing that as well. A lot of people on the cars tour put a small 12 inch spring on their left rear and they run a coil bind op option to where you're limiting travel in that regard as far as coal binding left rear spring. That's illegal in NASCAR late mile stock rules. So you can't run base valves and certain valving in the NASCAR rule book and you cannot limit travel in the left rear. You could also run a bump stop on the left rear on the bottom of the shock or you can run a coal bound left rear spring. So to be honest with you, that's really the only two differences. NASCAR legal shocks versus car store shocks, which we're not even talking about a huge investment here. Maybe $100 a shock up to, I mean, you can get crazy with it because now we have Bilstein shocks that are uh, available for purchase in the car store. Those are getting more expensive. But to be honest with you, it's really not worth the performance advantage. You can win races with Penske shocks. I've done it this year. Put this thing back before I get yelled at. Wrong hole. What I'm... One of them had all the weight in front of it. The fact that one of the pipe reach had all his weight in front. And he, and he was fine. So you would think as large of a deal this is projected to be by tracks, teams, uh, people of that nature, it's really not that big of a difference. I mean, other than that, these are still Cars Tour legal race cars. The only difference is the Cars Tour cars that are running in the Tour every week have the budget to potentially spend on the base valve shocks. They have the technology to coal bind a left rear spring, which I still can here too if I had a 12 inch spring. I don't do any of that on these cars because I'm all big spring, so I can't coal bind a big spring. Uh, it would have to be a really small coilover spring in order to do that. But I could bump stop on the left rear shock if I really wanted to. I don't. I haven't done that all year here, but a lot of the car store teams do choose to limit travel on the left rear. So really, those are the only two differences. I mean, there's maybe some very, very small um, issues in the rule book back and forth that aren't performance enhancing. But with those two small factors, that's what's preventing NASCAR and the Cars Tour for having an equal rule book. And to me, that's just absolutely absurd. So obviously, my operation here versus a Cars Tour operation, I'm down on funding. No doubt about that. I would say I'm one of the least funded people racing in the late model stock level obviously limited is a step down in funding for the most part except for your rental deals but i mean based or based off of what i'm racing against at the late model stock level we're spending pennies on the dollar don't get me wrong i'm super blessed at huffman racing to be able to do what i do and have the funding and the sponsors that we do but we just operate on less of a budget than almost all of our competitors. Where I'm going with this is you would think that a budgeted race team or a underfunded race team, quote unquote, like I may be operating here, would complain that, oh, the cars tour, my compressor just cut on, would complain that the cars tour cars are, have, or the cars tour teams have a strong advantage and can afford to spend money on base valve shocks and things of that nature to give to have an advantage over say the local racer but really i'm one of the people advocating for an even rule book whether i'm driving for nelson whether i'm driving for huffman racing whether i'm driving for dell Hart jr i don't care honestly there's really no reason whatsoever that a late model stock car sitting in this shop right here should not be legal for the cars tour on all aspects and a cars tour late model stock sitting in this shop if i were to have one that i raced in the tour every week would not be legal to take to a weekly show at Hickory or Tri-County or wherever I wanted to go race. They are designed for that. There's no reason why there should be any difference between the two. Hello, Seth. Hello. How we doing? We're doing good. Did you have a good day? No. Oh. You got a shot of deer this weekend. Nice biggin'. Yeah, you kissed my ass. Is that a record? It was 11 pointer, right? I mean, points wise, yeah. Oh, wise. so we did set a record. This Saturday at Tri-County, 
we will have a merchandise truck for the cars tour i'll be driving nelson's truck but we've got these pieces of wreckage available for sale at our tape or at our uh merch truck along with a bunch of new merchandise we've got hoodies and some other cool stuff so if you're going to the racetrack this weekend and you're interested in in any sheet metal off of our crashed pieces of crap then uh we'll have it at least first come first serve we're not sure how we're going to do the not, uh not many pieces there yeah we're not sure how we're going to do the the auction deal i don't know if i should have a set price or if we should do a silent auction everybody's saying that i need to donate half of it to charity if i do a silent auction yeah. but what they don't I realize is charity yeah Set this paycheck this is the charity yeah. we're in the trouble charity is whatever you get from these you pay me oh how's that fair how's, how's it not fair we got something uh <laughs> we got a big announcement coming up huh? yeah yeah we're gonna have to start we're gonna have to start a fitness program here at huffman racing <laughs> because uh yeah. we're gonna have live pit stops what are you gonna do carrie i don't know <laughs> we'll see how the treehouse go yeah so uh we're gonna have to start a, a fitness program here because we got a pretty cool announcement coming I and uh guy. yeah Boy, i can just sit there it involves live pit stops and uh it's not something that we've ever done before so it's a 2024 announcement we have no business doing yeah it's a 2024 announcement and you guys let me know in the comments what you think i put a little teaser on my instagram today a little sneak peek on my story so if you've seen this in time you might be able to catch it but um, let me know in the comments what you think our announcement may be for next year. It's going to be pretty cool. All right, guys. That's really all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to explain the difference in the uh, the two rule books because I meant to do a video on it a long time ago. And uh, I did not get around to it. So hopefully next year we see some effort to work together between the two series. There's really no reason why there shouldn't be. Um, we'll just have to see. But for the time being, I will be at Tri-County, like I said, this weekend for the Cars Tour. Uh, first time I've been back there, or, well, that's not true. I uh, went back there in our own car and won. So the last two trips I've been to Tri-County, I've won. And uh, hopefully we make it three in a row, and then the next week make it four in a row. So come on out to Tri-County this weekend. Like I said, we'll have a merch truck. I think uh, my buddy Dylan Wilson's doing some kind of beer tailgate deal for two boroughs as well as a trackside deal but should be a good time and uh like i said thank you guys for watching this video hopefully it was somewhat informative and uh hope hopefully we have a good weekend this weekend take you guys along for the ride per usual see you guys in the next one